Oh yeah, Zucks box. Are you still doing that? Yeah, apparently. My my idea was to kill it after one week, but then uh, some people started to create a Twitter profile <laughs> to launch a real airdrop, and so I decided not to. I mean, to let the kids play and so yeah. still alive. Well, I didn't really want to talk about Hex, but now that we're talking about Zucks, um, isn't it isn't it crazy how how he was able to pump that thing and fool well, so many so many people fool that that this is some <laughs> futuristic decentralized technology better than Bitcoin. But not that crazy in the context. I, I see. I, I mean, the context is the co- the same context in which uh, uh, one guy started with a, a shitcoin joke, pretty much like Zaxbox, and it was a few years ago, Dogecoin. And now there is people who are basically throwing life life saving in Dogecoin because the market is pumping it. And that guy Jackson is actually he was pretty much anti anti market and anti capitalist. So he was super pissed that people was uh, making money and losing money. Uh, uh, with a joke, but this is the power of these so-called tokens. When you create, uh, when when there is a huge information asymmetry about the new technology, so that people don't don't really know what they are talking about. You you, you have traders discussing the adoption of Mimble Wimble of Segwit, but these traders they don't have any clue what they are discussing. They are discussing transaction per second, uh, proof of stake. They are, they are discussing blockchain size, but they, have, they don't have the slightest clue. They're just repeating buzzwords. So you have this, uh, this information asymmetry. Then you have what I, oh, what I often mention, which is the shock of uh, Bitcoin about your, your uh, uh, reality filters, your uh, reality heuristics. So when you start with Bitcoin, you think that's impossible. Then Bitcoin shows, I mean, if you are a sane person, if you are a knowledgeable person, usually you are skeptical about Bitcoin initially. Then Bitcoin breaks your skepticism, and then your skepticism is broken, and, and now everything can enter. You don't have a filter anymore, because if Bitcoin was possible, then everything else, which is a little bit Bitcoinish, must also be possible. For someone who doesn't, is listening to this, doesn't know what sure. we're talking about, I, I was influenced by Trace Mayer. I got into Bitcoin in 2011, and he was one of the people that I started to watch on YouTube and at conferences and all that stuff. Roger Ver, like Stefan Molyneux at the time was talking about Bitcoin. Um, Jeffrey Zucker, whatever the guy that wears the bow tie. Tucker. 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 <laughs> Tucker. 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 Yeah. Andreas Antonopoulos. You know, all these folks, even Brock Pierce and, and uh, you know, all these folks that were influential to, to me as a Bitcoiner because I was into gold, like trying to figure out like what this fiat money is a scam and I want to find something else. And uh, Trace was one of the guys that made the most amount of sense to me. And like, he always came across to me as a little bit like egotistical or a little bit weird. But I think I I just got the hunch that he was just like Mormon or something and that he was just like had a weird conservative upbringing. And that's why he was weird like that. But I liked everything he was saying. Maybe true. Maybe true. And what he said made sense. I mean, it's not that the fact that you are a scammer now cancels what you did before. I mean... Yeah. Uh, even Roger, I mean, Andreas was enormously influ- influential before receiving a lot of critics about uh, about some uh, Ethereum sympathies. But he was uh, he enormously instrumental to Bitcoin. And even in a, in a way, even Roger Ver uh, at the yeah, Roger too. Yeah, was I, I mean, the Roger, blockchain, I, I, blockchain info wallet was a, a great product at the very beginning. So Roger, Roger was always to me like, I'll tolerate this guy, but he's always he always you could always see through Roger like he he was either hurt or like there's something ego hurt about him that he always seemed like he was in a battle with somebody or something and it was always always about his ego let's assume that that coin join is super dangerous and is super broken i don't think it is i think that the alternative of not using best privacy is crazily dangerous but let's say the coin join is more dangerous which is not the case how can you possibly think that the answer is an altcoin. Yeah. You said, why Mimble Wimble coin? But even if you talk about Monero, I mean, Monero is a serious experiment. Monero has a serious technology, has a decent community, has a serious development, but even Monero has a, a basic point uh, in, in this debate, which is, if the exchange is going to ban you from conjoining Bitcoin, right. the exchange will just going to ban you uh, deposit or withdrawal in Monero. It's as simple as that. 
they are allowing you to do that with, with Zcash because they are just allowing not shielded transactions. So you are even more traceable than in Bitcoin with Zcash if you don't use shielded yeah, that Yeah, like that was intellectually dishonest when you see Coinbase saying, uh, Zcash, the future of privacy, we're going to accept deposits. You can trade Zcash for your privacy. Yeah. And then in no in, shielded, in, you know, so you have no shielded transactions, 99% yeah, so of all the transactions are just visible transactions. Which doesn't mean the same privacy of Bitcoin. It means the same privacy technology, but worse privacy overall because you have a smaller anonymity set. So with Zcash, you have the same exposure on the time chain than Bitcoin. But since nobody's using Zcash, uh, unlike with Bitcoin, you have a super small anonymity set and you're super easy to trace. So uh, if that's the case, you can say, I mean, I don't agree that CoinJoin is more dangerous than non-CoinJoin. But if that's the case, for your for anyway, your privacy or for your privacy for your personal security, I mean the the risk of being flagged by an exchange, especially after your withdrawal, is small compared to the risk well, of having people looking at your personal. Privacy. I don't think there's any risk to to trying to increase your privacy. I just think what he was trying to say, which I can understand his perspective, was if you have a hundred million dollars in Bitcoin, say, or whatever, a million dollars of Bitcoin or whatever's a big amount to you, like $10,000 in Bitcoin and you mind it or whatever you, it's clean. You know, it's clean. Oh, it's, yeah. it's from an exchange. If, well, but if you, if like, you mind, no, if, uh, but I will make a strong difference. If you mind it, if it's already clean in the sense that nobody knows any connection with any identity, you should not go and join it. A Richard Hart will be smart enough not to go to a Bitcoin maximalist conference, which is 99% centered about teaching people about shit coins as scams and using that as the perfect place in order to make- Yeah, it almost, it, almost felt, it almost felt like he was doing it on purpose. He was either just totally intellectually honest about it and had a shift in mindset and really believes this is the thing and thinks for some reason he can create the other six network effects like Roger well, Ver is trying to do if, with if that's the case, If that's the case, you can say that on stage during Confiscatable and, and get your your dose of uh, of uh, booze instead of, <laughs> instead of keeping yeah. talking about Bitcoin and then approaching uh, uh, then approaching private individuals during the, the during the party, these individuals were not even other speakers. They were my students of a Bitcoin 101 course. So the individual, the, the three individuals that he targeted were individuals that uh, I know for a fact were, uh, were paying money to learn about Bitcoin for the first time. So it's not that he tar tried to target me or, or Tone or, or they ta he targeted these individuals, giving them this, this little ticket with like promises of, uh, of, uh, of uh, increases in value. And when one of these guys asked him, but I'm, he asked him, okay, I understand that you are selling me that this is a new Bitcoin, but what, you still have a lot of Bitcoin, right? And he said, uh, it, didn't, it was not super explicit, but he smiled like saying, mm, I sold all my Bitcoin for this Mimba Wimba coin. Yeah, it's like so, a used car salesman tactic. Yeah, exactly. Which, and it was not done in public. It which was makes done me private. think like, okay, so did, did he, was he then trying to is there something else maybe that the, that's going on that he's trying to like make it appear like he's coming out of favor of bitcoin and he's trying to like make it appear like he is a shit coiner now and and it's just disappeared and like yeah, well, that, that, that seems like the other likely scenario to me like he just committed harry carry that's bitcoin the most harry charitable Kari. scenario in absolute and in that case uh, what i'm doing uh, by exposing him is just helping him so he would be super happy about my contribution to his tactics. <laughs> well that's the thing that makes me that i think about too because i i'm trying to not be in an echo chamber and i'm trying to actually be open-minded to different technologies and stuff and m i spent a lot of time thinking about this and feeling bad because i don't know I, just, I obsess over it i guess um looking at different projects and looking at their communities and looking at their what they're trying to sell to the market and looking at how investors perceive it and then looking at the fundamentals behind it and most recently it was DeFi. it was it was the um the DeFi bubble with the the liquidity mining and the yield farming and all that that happened a couple of weeks ago it's still going on but like when comp token launched it went up to three billion market cap and uh then it's like this fomo starts to bubble up 
and it distracts people. And then the investors, kind of like what you said earlier, like the second in your point of like, uh, you know, shill in the bag, <clears throat> the second reason why some of these people can get fooled on these, on, on these uh, scams like BSV. And I think maybe I didn't let you finish that one, but maybe the third one is that they, they make themselves believe it. Like they actually convince themselves that because the technology is interesting, that 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 that's a good mission because say DeFi for example like i feel like these people convince themselves that decentralized finance as a concept is such a good mission that it's going to help the world that they justify all the fundamental problems that are there with these tokens and and ethereum token the pre-mine the unfairness of that um the the total, yeah, the, the breaking the DAO, of the social the contract. DAO, the DAO bailout, yeah, exactly. All the stuff, the diffusing of the difficulty bombs. Yeah, I think, I think that's a, that's, that was actually was uh, one of the things I was going to add, which is the intellectual, uh, intellectual back. Even, so even if you're an honest guy, only think about design and you prefer this kind of design over the other, then there is the token, uh, the low liquidity token, then hundreds of thousands of people will arrive randomly to pump this token because they want to do a pump and dump. So they will create a situation in which uh, some people, uh, some serious people will ignore you. They will just dismiss you, even if you have good, good point, because they, have, they are established a good or defensive heuristic. I mean, you talk about echo chamber, but echo chambers, sometimes they are, lecture, they, they are just protection. If you, if you go to, you know, to a shooting range, and you put your protection on your ears. It, that's an echo chamber, but it, it's for your own protection. Yeah. Uh, you, when, you, when you have a server and you want to protect it from DDoS, you create a, a heuristic in which, uh, or your email, you have an anti-spam filter. Anti-spam filter are an heuristic. It means that maybe in one, ca in one case over to 200,000, one honest N Nigerian person that also happens to be a prince will write you about a legit way to a larger penis because that that's the point with shit coins you have to pump and so you it, have to yeah it's hard to disintermediate the um core tenant of a blockchain and satoshi's creation and the the, the invention of blockchain the invention of bitcoin it's hard to like just uh separate the I mean, when you're when you're an investor, when you're a noob in the space, when you're when you're a newbie and you're just hearing about crypto and you're hearing Bitcoin's going up, and I just want to Google buy Bitcoin, and then you see Ethereum and all these other things, and you're like, oh, these are all the same conversation. I should get this one; it's cheaper. And then it's hard to really go and look at it and then understand that Bitcoin is decentralized as a core tenant and censorship resistant, and a full node is important because it's sovereignty and a full node in Bitcoin allows you to actually like cliche be your own bank. Doesn't mean you have to, but the, the threat that you can do that is what keeps Bitcoin valuable. And Ethereum, the, the narrative is look at all these interesting smart contracts. It's kind of like Bitcoin because it has nodes. You can run a node just the same as Bitcoin and you know, but, but you can do DeFi and now, all the, you know, you can put Bitcoin on Ethereum and like, so then therefore buy the ETH token because it's cheaper than Bitcoin. And it's going to be like opening up the entire world of, of, uh, of, of finance, like the quadrillions of dollars of derivatives and, and synthetic like assets are going to be on Ethereum because of DeFi. And you can do it all in a full node, just like Bitcoin. So it has the same properties as Bitcoin. And that's the thing that's like, I try to I try to intellectually be honest about the the technical side of Ethereum versus the technical side of Bitcoin, and then also the ETH token and the BTC token. And it's tough because the BTC token, like the Bitcoins, are such a different product than the ETH token. 